back, everybody, to another one of our convos. Today joining me is Philip Maximilian from the upcoming Disney mega movie, Jungle Cruise. Uh, we're just here to have a nice conversation with him and, and chat about the movie, his career at this point, and a little bit of everything else. So thank you for joining us, first and foremost, and congrats on the movie finally being released. Mario, thanks so much for having me. I know it's... Um, it's been a long time. I guess you guys filmed this, what, three years ago? And it's just now being released? I know. It feels, uh, it's bizarre that this thing is finally seeing the light of day because we did film it three years ago. And then we actually went back to do reshoots like seven months later. And originally it was going to come out in the fall of 2019. And then that got moved to summer of 2020. And we all know what happened. Yeah. But that, you know, didn't yeah. really come to fruition. So it's really exciting to finally see this thing happen. So are you like one of those actors when you finish, you know, filming something and it kind of goes out of sight, out of mind. And then when it finally comes up again, you're like, oh, yeah, I did, you know, do that. Usually, yes. But this project was so epic. And I would, you know, like we had such a good time filming this that I, I did think about this all the time, you know, so I. I would check in and be like, Hey, when is it coming out? And, you know, I'm, I'm super stoked that it's finally here. Well, it's a, it's a big one. I, would you say this is probably like your biggest uh, project to date? Obviously it's Disney and it's Dwayne Johnson and, you know, all these other people in there. So. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's it, not only in the caliber of actors, you know, you just mentioned Dwayne and, and Emily Blunt and Jesse Plemons, who is, absolutely incredible and i was a fan of his before i even found out that i got this part but also in size of in uh in terms of scale because i had never done anything like that i've ne I'd never done anything with cgi and you know it's trippy because i saw the film now and i there are scenes where where i'm watching the scene and i'm like oh my god that's what we were looking at. You know, you're sort of looking at, you're on a boat on a man-made lake and there's, you know, a machine making waves and like, you know, all these propellers blowing wind at you and there's rain and waterfall and all this stuff. But then you're just looking at a blue screen yeah. and on that blue screen, there are letters and, you know, you're, you're kind of interacting with this blue screen and you know, there's something you're looking at that is between the letter C and F and your imagination just is like, okay, got it. Tree of life. Okay. What could that look like? And then you see it all done with all the effects and everything in it, And you're like, Oh my God, that is so much more epic than what I had envisioned when we were filming this. Yeah. So was this like your first time seeing the final product? Cause I know you guys did the, um, you know, the big premiere for it recently. Yes. We had uh, last weekend, we were, had our big premiere at Disneyland, which, was a dream come true for me because I've been a huge Disney nerd my entire life. I know everything about Disney theme parks, truly, like things that nobody should know, I know. <laughs> and to be there and to take my mom to it, and that's the first time I ever saw it. Like I saw the whole thing. I've seen bits and pieces here and there, but I hadn't seen the finished final cut. So you said you've been, you know, you know so much about Disney and Disneyland and all that. So I'm assuming you've been on Jungle Cruise more than a few times before you even got the role. Yes. The first time I was on Jungle Cruise, I was five years old with the rain poncho. I think I thought that the animals on the ride were real. And um, I was definitely scared. I definitely thought someone was going to, you know, some snake or some tiger was going to come jump out at me and, and kill me and then i've done the jungle cruise so many times since it's one of my favorite rides because it's one of the original rides at disney so here yeah. this is where my my nerd uh fandom comes in it's it was there when walt disney opened disneyland in 1955 and it's you know it's so iconic and i love that yeah i mean it's been a while since i've been to one of the parks and it's been a while since i've definitely been on that ride but when i saw the name and the trailer for it i was like wait is that for the ride you know and it's like yeah oh. yeah yeah i guess you, know what, you get the story from there what what disney does so well and what i loved about the script too is you can experience that ride as a kid and i mentioned you know as a five-year-old i thought the tigers and the snakes were going to come jump at me i was scared on that on that ride and as an adult you appreciate the tongue-in-cheek humor and the sort of kind of 
you know, everything is, everything's got a sense of humor to it. Yeah. So, you know, the elephants bathing themselves or like, you know, the, the adventurers that are climbing up the pole and there's a, there's a rhino underneath poking them with his yeah. horn and everything kind of has this punchline to it that as a kid, you don't really understand, but as a, as an adult, and I think Disney does that so well that you can watch a film and it's great for kids and they see it in a whole different way than the adults do. And I think the movie does that really, really well that there's a lot of humor that will go over kids' heads and will really speak to the adults and the whole dynamic between Dwayne and Emily, I think is adults, but then kids get such a thrill out of, you know, the adventure of that. Yeah. I mean, I think that's kind of the ride itself too, right? Because for the kids, they get to see all the animals and like see all the cool, uh, you know, attraction that they have for it. But then for the adults, what I remember, cause I was a little older last time I went, it was just all the, like the endless amount of puns that, that, you know, that yes. you right to. so then like, yes, you get that side of it. So I'm assuming there's like a lot of puns and going to be like in this movie too. Just you wait. You <laughs> will be walking out of that theater dreaming of puns. And it's, it's, it's amazing because Dwayne sells that so well. You know, if it was another actor, it would kind of, it, could, it has the potential to get annoying or you're thinking, oh God. But he sells it, it the cheese factor with such sincerity and um, uh, conviction that it's sort of, it's hilarious. And I saw it again last night. There was a fan preview here in LA at the El Capitan Theater. And the theater was going nuts over those corny jokes. It was pretty funny. Awesome. So I guess um, going back a little bit, you did say this was like your first time filming like CGI and a blue screen and all that. I guess for you as an actor, do you find that to be like more freeing because you can just use your imagination to kind of come out scene or is it a little harder to, to pull out those scenes? It's it kind of interestingly enough brought me back to my theater roots because you're improvising so much and you're having to use your imagination. You're when you're on stage and you're, you're doing stage work instead of film, you have to use your imagination because you're just on the stage and you're, you know, in a Scottish castle or you're in a faraway land and the make-believe factor is so much more because you're just on this stage and everybody in the room is sort of under the same, uh, signed the same contract that we're here for two hours and we're pretending that this is happening. We're on film, everything's much more literal. So you're filming on location, your studio looks like how the, these sets are supposed to look like. And when you're doing CGI work, you're really having to pretend yeah. again. Like in the film, there is a character, um, uh, it's a tiger, Proxima. And um, really, you know, what we had was a silver ball that you play with. We knew where her head was. We knew sort of kind of imagine how she moved, but you know, you have to use your imagination. How does a tiger move? Yeah. How does the tiger jump up? And, and it was, it was really fun. It was a lot more fun than I thought it would be going into it. Cause yeah. I thought, Oh God, this is how do I do this. I mean, that's awesome. Cause I always like wondered about that. You know, I'm just like, it's gotta be kind of hard, but it's also gotta be like you said, fun because you can just kind of just go out there and do whatever you, you want. Yeah. Bring. And I guess, yeah, exactly. So this is obviously you said this is your biggest, role to date and it's Disney and it's all I've said Emily Blunt, Dwayne Johnson. So how did you come about in getting this role? Like how was the um, process and all that? There was a casting process and I, I auditioned for the part and, you know, it's funny because as an actor, you get these auditions and you uh, have to be very good at forgetting them or sort of compartmentalizing where you just, you get the audition, you give it your all, you work on it, you, you, go in or now it's self tapes mostly. And then you forget about it because otherwise you just go nuts. Right. If you're just constantly thinking, Oh, I wonder if I got that art, like, when am I going to hear back from, from these people or so with this one, it was similar, except that I had a much harder time letting it go because it was Disney and it's 
based on a Disneyland ride. It just had everything I like that I'm all about. Like yeah. everything that I love was in this part. So I couldn't let it go. And I was thinking about it, but then I didn't hear back for probably two or three months. And I auditioned in like the spring of 2018. And then in August, I got a call from my agent and she was like, you got to get on a plane. You got to be on set. I think tomorrow, I think it was the next day. And I was like, Oh my God, like what, what, who am I playing? What's the script? And she's like, I, I can't tell you anything. It's super like, they're not giving out any information. You just have to go. And they'll let you know once you're there. And it was wild. I was like, you know, it wasn't until I got fitted and I sort of was introduced and, and Jama, the director who's fantastic was like, Oh yeah, you just, you know, uh, this is what we're going to shoot today. And I said, I haven't, you know what we're going to shoot today. I said, no, I know nothing. I know nothing. I've been having nightmares that I don't know what to do. And, you know, cause that's as an actor, that is a nightmare that keeps coming up is you being on stage and not knowing any of your lines. No. So, I mean, did, did you know, like uh, the rock was going to be involved and did you know the act, other actors that were going to be there or did you kind of, yes, I did know, I did know the rock and Emily Blunt were involved. That's about it. And um, Jesse, Jesse Plemons, who plays Prince Joachim, he was the first person I met on, on set. And um, he plays a German character in this film. And I'm German, born and raised, I was born in Austria, raised in Germany. And I speak German, obviously. So uh, he, he saw that as, as an opportunity for his character to become more grounded in truth and to have dialogue with a fellow German. So my character, Axel, just kind of grew out of that, out of him and I meeting and like coming up with stuff and, and improvising a lot and just kind of having fun with it. That's how this character, Axel, came to be. So you basically have to build the character yourself instead of it having like handed it to you. Yes, 100%. There was no character when I got to set. There really wasn't a character except that I was a mercenary. And what you see in the film now, most of that was just improvising and playing with Jesse. And there is a song I sing for him towards the end of the film that... Um, was it was Jesse's idea for me to sing him this song and to like calm his character down at some point in a pivotal moment of the film, which when you see it, you know what I'm talking about. And he texted or called me one night. This was like two weeks into filming and said, Hey man, I think it'd be so funny if you sing a song. Do you know a popular song from 1915? I was like, no. And I started looking up songs of that time and there was this song and, and I started memorizing it. And I was like, oh my God, I'm going to have to sing in front of these people. I'm so, I'm already like dying being in a room full of these giant superstars and then to have to do this. And the director at first was like, okay, guys, like we don't have time for this. This is not in the script. What are you doing? And he said, at the end of the night, if we have everything we needed every, all the coverage of everything without the song will give you like a take to do the song. And so I think we honestly had maybe one or two takes and we did it and I got through it <laughs> and then it's in the final cut. It's in the film now, which is so exciting. That's hilarious. The thing that you maybe not a middle of film is, you know, made it into it anyways. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you must have pulled it off, you know? So I'm definitely excited to see that one. And I guess uh, Jesse Plemons, how familiar with them, were you with them before? Um, and what was it like working with somebody who's, I guess, so established now and he's such a great actor? Yeah, I I loved him before, or his work, I should say, before I even met him. I knew him from Breaking Bad. That's when I first saw him. And he, um, he plays this character, um, I think it's Todd on there, and he just scared the living daylights out of me and oh, i scared. remember the scene he he was so good and so scary and then like man all of his work is just like it keeps getting keeps getting better and it keeps getting like deeper with his role and and even this i know a lot of people um 
I think, you know, Disney villain, how much is there to it? Jesse took this role very seriously and it was amazing to watch him uh, really do his, do his work and do like backstory and, and just, you know, trying to not have a one dimensional Disney villain. And it was amazing. I learned so much from him. I mean, it's hard to think of somebody that plays a better villain these days than him, honestly. Like, I mean, like, cause he's had obviously a very good run recently with Judas and the black Messiah. And then now this, and then it's just, he has a way of, I don't know, bringing out normal in characters, but also terrifying, like at the same time. And he just, he does it. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I totally, I feel the same way. He does it with such a sort of effortless smile. You know, he delivers these awful lines or does these awful things and just does it. And it feels kind of just kind of like, you know, just, just going to the grocery store and yeah. ordering a sandwich. Yeah. And then you also get to work with, uh, obviously, Dwayne Johnson and Emily Blunt. And what was it like working with, I mean, The Rock is easily probably the biggest superstar in Hollywood right now. Um, but they were amazing to work with. I mean, I had right off the bat i think my first day i had a scene with um emily and Dwayne, and they both made me feel like hey you're one of us it's cool we're gonna just you know we're, we'll mess around we're like you know like kind of just play around and see what comes up and and that took the anxiety out of me and that took this this you know when i felt like what the fuck did I get myself into they were so great and there was actually a scene early on I think in the first week of filming where um I, I had this moment with Emily and and they did her coverage and then you know they kind of switched cameras and they were doing the coverage of me and you know they wanted to pull her off and she had the stand-in obviously that would have done her thing for me and Emily insisted on doing that herself. And she just was like, no, I'll stay. And it just was such a generous move. And so felt me, made me feel so appreciated. And, you know, she didn't have to do that. And that was amazing. Yeah, I'm sure it's always great to have actors of that caliber to like be so welcoming and opening because I feel like you got to be nervous going into somebody who's so established in, in the industry like that and not knowing yeah. that getting into you know and all of them both i mean Dwayne, emily and jesse they i feel like they know exactly that they started off somewhere at some point with a small role or you know they were also happy that they would have someone more established kind of take them in and show them the ropes and, and not be you know not give them the feeling i'm this diva i'm you know yeah. I'm better than you and that was that was super helpful I mean, it's definitely got to make for a better, you know, filming environment and comes out, I think it comes out in the film too. Yeah. And I think if, you know, you, if you asked anybody on set, what it was like working on set with these people, I think everybody would only have positive stories to tell because they were just great with everyone. You know, they were just palling around with everyone from, you know, technical people, CGI, crew, um, craft services. It just was like, felt like a big family, a big family. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm sure it's a lot of people on that set. Oh um, yes. So I guess this is, is this your first villain you played in your career? Really? No, I, I, for some reason, I, I, I keep finding the villains. It's always the backhanded villains, always the villains that, that start out, um, where you think, oh, he's the nice guy. He's the nice, you know, uh, you can trust him. And then it turns out, no, don't trust him. That for some reason, that's, that's funny my thing. Because my introduction to you, I was like, when I got the name in the picture, I was like, oh, I think I've seen it before. It was from Atlanta with uh, Don Glover, which is one of my favorite shows, which is a phenomenal show. Um, and then you also got to start in like, probably one of the best episodes they've ever shot for the show. It was, I think it's called Helen, where they go off to uh, like a German festival and you get to play like the German character again. And you're like the bartender. You seem kind of like, 
cool and normal, like chill, but then it's also you get that feeling of like he's kind of you trying to weasel his way in and like in this little situation right there and like all this like so definitely like your character in that one definitely always stuck with me from that episode and that show just for like that little those little moments you had in the episode. Thanks, man. I really appreciate that. I I had such a great time working uh working with Donald and and he it was another instance where he loves to just kind of improvise and and see what comes up and to be on set with him and to have him just play around with it and, and give me the opportunity to, to do things and and there were moments in that um that weren't on the script that we just weren't in the script that we just came up with and it was it was a treat he is absolutely incredible he is such a multi-talent too oh yeah that working with him uh was a real was a real treat so i mean you think there's any possibility of your character making a, you know another maybe reappearance somewhere down the line in the show we'll see i may not be i'd love that because I, I mean i love the dynamic that it kind of created even more tension between obviously uh van and Ern, the two main characters well, the main character hey, send, send out those vibes send out those positive <laughs> vibes and, and we'll hope that you know makes it back yeah, it's been a few years. I think it's time to go out there again, go out to Allen again. So. Yeah. So I guess um, you said you were born in Germany. You're well, born in Austria. You're from Germany. How did you make your way out to Hollywood and how did you get your career started in acting? Um, I moved out to L.A. at 25, more or less. You know, it was hard for me to get a visa and then eventually get the green card. It took years and years. So I first came out here. I was just... I just finished uh, acting school in, in Berlin the year before, and I was in was doing this play in Berlin, and that lasted for months and months, and then I just felt like I wanted to come to L.A. I wanted to give this a shot, and I sort of felt like if I would have continued to work in Germany, I would, you know, start a career there, maybe make a ma- name for myself, and then I would never even attempt to come here. Yeah. I thought I got to give this a shot. I got to come out here. And if I fail, then so be it. I can, you know, go back home. But yeah, I'm actually surprised that I'm still here just because there were so many hurdles along the way and so many really, really close calls where I was convinced I would have to go back home to Germany because, you know, visas ran out or I was denied visas and and stuff like that so i feel really really lucky and grateful that i'm able to still be here and that i've gotten solid roots now and you know make made this my home i mean now you got a disney movie are you feeling like kind of now like uh like i'm i'm solid now i'm I'm a (laughs) roger like i got you know yeah i think i'm i think i'm okay now okay and uh, we also get like a lot of uh, young actors who like watch us and inter- that watch the interviews that we do. I guess, do you have anything, any advice for them when they're t- trying to get into it? And because obviously your path is a little different than somebody who's in the US, but do you have any advice to how to break in or, or any tips that would help them continue down the path? I know it sounds so redundant because you've heard this a million times, but you just got to keep at it and even when you think that you're you're coming to a dead end and you've given it your all you haven't you can still go further and you can still work harder and i know that's very vague but it is so true for me that it it took years and years and years and it didn't always feel like an upward uh hill it just felt like a roller coaster and most of the time the roller coaster was going down right now you're catching me in this moment when i'm up on the hill and i'm really enjoying the ride but for years and years it it wasn't going anywhere and you know like you get to the end of a year and you know kind of new year's eve you look back on that year and you think what did i do what did i do with my life and as an actor you think wait, did I even work as an actor this year? You know, like you, you have these thoughts of reminiscing and I had many of those New Year's Eves where I just felt like, what, what am I doing with my life? But then I 
kept at it and, and, you know, you just got to go with the flow and I don't know if it's, you know, where tomorrow's going to go or next year or the year after, but you just kind of keep at it and keep a day job. That's so important that you're not, you know, struggling to make ends meet, that you have something that you can make money and you don't have to rely on those auditions because that gets scary sometimes. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely a, it's a tough process because a lot of people, obviously it's such a big industry and so many people are involved in it and there's so much competition, but you also got to have the passion for it. So what, what was it that made you so passionate about acting? Is it something that you always wanted to do or was it like a movie or is it a moment that was like, that's what I'm going to do? I always, I always kind of knew that that's what I wanted to do. Even as a kid, I said, I'm going to be an actor. This is like where I want to go. And I always said I wanted to come to Hollywood at some point. I think um, when I was 13, I went to see The Exorcist in theaters. Oh. I was too little to watch it. So whoever seeing it out there, I do not recommend this for a 13 year old. I watched it when I was nine. So I mean, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. I mean, and I grew up watching horror movies. So like I was watching Freddy Krueger and Jason when I was like, seven or eight you know child's play and all that stuff oh my god you are next level well for me this at 13 i was i i was shit-faced uh scared a scared shitless that's the expression see it my german does come out sometimes i was not shit-faced at 13 was like, we're getting into <laughs> we're getting into a, a dark hole here um <laughs> no i was i was really scared but at the same time i was watching it thinking this is so good in a sense that it just i was sort of encapsulated in this film and 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 felt like how are they doing this how are they able to make me feel a certain way and make this feel so real and i knew that that's what i wanted to do it's definitely a good one and it, there's a reason it's it's it like sticks with people you know to the day when they talk about like horror movies and stuff like oh yeah that yeah that was that was it so I guess is there like any um, dream project for you outside of obviously John Cruise Disney? Obviously that was a big one. Is there like any other dream projects you would have? Yeah, I just um, I just finished writing my first script, my feature script that I worked on for a few years with a friend of mine, Michael Borokov, and um, it's a it's a love story set in Berlin in the in the nineteen thirties in the early thirties in Berlin, which was this incredible time in German history, the Weimar Republic, and um, a time that isn't really represented on film as much as the years that followed, of course. And um, I'm very excited about this script. And I just, like, that's my next goal is to make this, get this made and, and find the right people to um, pair up with, you know. Are you planning on directing it, just producing it, or? I don't know yet. I don't know yet. I, I don't know where the journey is going to lead me, but I'm super excited about the project itself. And I, I believe in the, in the script and I, I don't know if I want to direct it. I love directing and I've done that many times now, but you know, with this particular one, we'll see. Okay. Well, congrats on your first script though. So, yeah. Thank you, man. And, um, what was that? Next? Oh yeah. Uh, it's been three years since, you know, you filmed this one. So the, I guess, is there any other projects that you have that will be coming out around this time or coming out in the future that you've been working on since then? Well, and, you know, during COVID, I, I started really focusing on my directing and there's, um, you know, a bunch of shows there where I directed the, the voiceover portion of it because I, I'm in voiceover and, um, you know, that's been a big part of my journey over the last year and a half, half. But there is a project that I'm um, very excited that's going to come out where I'm involved as a producer as well as an actor um, called Dr. Wunderkind. It's a series. I think that's how much we can say at this point. It's a series and we have uh, part of the first episode already in the can. And uh, it's, I'm very excited about that. It, it's still pretty early in the, in the process, but um, that's sort of my next gig okay and uh reviews have been 
rolling out so far uh how's the feedback been about the movie are you excited about the way that people are talking about it you know i haven't really read anything yet but uh i hope that people like the film i hope that people like this sort of you know summer blockbuster well from and... the news i've seen it's been pretty pretty overwhelmingly positive i think and you know i think they said <clears throat> Dad did mention you and Jesse Clemens and a few of them, and as you guys are kind of standouts, so. Oh, that's great. Now, I I tend to not read reviews because I'm, uh, I did a lot of theater when I was a teenager, and I remember reading reviews, especially the bad reviews. You know, there would be like, of the 10 good reviews, I would read the one that had something not so pleasant to say, and I would just take that to heart and it would crush me so i try not to read reviews they can be brutal they reviews that yes especially now that everybody is uh can be their own online critic you know yeah but um it's opening today i believe this is the opening day for everybody it's also streaming on uh disney plus doing their program and uh once again congratulations for you know delivering a Disney movie and a junk cruise with huge stars. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure to talk to you. Good talking to you too. And uh, looking forward to seeing what you're into next. Hopefully Atlanta. Hopefully we get you coming back in Atlanta. Hopefully. Hey, let's get those vibes out. I, I really believe in you. I think you can make this happen for us. I think, I think Atlanta needs to come back in general, but then we, I definitely need you to come back as like a reoccurring character. So we'll see what we can do. Yes, please. All right, man. Good talking to you. Uh, have a good day. Nice talking to you. Bye.